in them. Thank you guys for coming on. It is, I don't even know what date, I think today's the 21st or 22nd of July, but it's, we're already well past the middle of the month. And so a lot of us are just kind of still on the summit high, still kind of in that high, just in that, still in that momentum. I wouldn't be surprised if some people are losing momentum. It's quite normal. You know, you kind of go to this, you know, this event that you just feel the energy, it's palpable, and you're around motivated people who are positive and encouraging and excited and excited about the business and excited just about life and high on life. And one thing I will say about that, guys, is that if you can cultivate a community around you who is like that all the time, you're going to see that your life is always going to be kind of high vibing, you're going to have that energy, you're going to and it's something to work towards, you know, and it's something that even if you may not have that right now in your inner circle, that may mean that it may be time to change your inner circle a little bit. Doesn't mean you have to leave people behind, but it does mean that if you are seeking more of that, if you want more of the positivity, more of the high energy, more, I'm telling you, like you have to go out and seek that and find that. And I guarantee that there are people like that in your community who would love to just kind of link arms with you and get to know you more. So I want to encourage you. And I know, and if you guys have any questions about just like, you guys ever want to talk about that or even have a call on that or just the idea of just how do you, because I know a lot of people when they come, especially when they come into coaching, you come in with your, the circle you have now, you come in with the group of people you have now. And sometimes your spouse, your family, they may not be up to speed with your positivity. And sometimes that can be a little bit of a Debbie Downer but that's okay. And like, it's one of those things where it's actually, it, it is normal, unfortunately, but it doesn't mean that their, that their mindset won't change as you continue to grow and you continue to lead. But anyway, so super excited about today's call. Luke and I are going to be co-hosting it together. We're going to be talking about coaching, talking about the coaching opportunity, uh, how to speak about the coaching opportunity, um, because I think that's something that I think will be incredibly useful to you guys couple quick announcements. There's still plenty of time left in the month to hit success club. Remember, overall, our many of us on our many of us in the team have huge goals coming out of summit, have huge goals to really impact lots of people, to really be that light, be that positivity for others. I actually was on a call with some of the leaders, Ariel, you know, Jacqueline, Carla, um, Estefania, and we were just talking about how we our team is so beautifully unique i feel not number one because of diversity you know just the diversity within our team but also number two just the idea of mental health warriors and what i want to say by that is that's and that's something that we feel and when i say mental health warriors it doesn't mean that other teams don't have other stuff that's happened to them hasn't have depression anxiety but we for whatever reason a lot of us on our team feel very called to speak about it and to really be a pillar of light for other people and to really work through our own journeys and really enhance our own lives so that we can really bring light to these types of topics, depression and anxiety, and hold space for other people. So that's the type of team you're on. That's the type of, you know, the mission, the heart of this team that we have to really be that those light workers, the mental health warriors, to really let other people know that they're not alone and that we're here to hold a safe space for them so that they can grow and they can become better versions of themselves. So really pumped, really excited. We have girls on our team who are pushing for impacting more people, pushing for rank advancements within, within Beachbody, Premier and Elite at the end of the year. And it's gonna be something that's gonna take a huge team effort to reach for. Um, so yes, so with that said, we have lots of more time left in the month to be impacting lots of people, to be inviting them into MM100. How many of you have tried MM100, have tried one of the workouts? It's phenomenal. I think it's like one of the best. I'm so pumped. Like I already, I did the 10 days and like literally from day one to day 10, I could see my strength building. I could see at first I was like, I don't think I could do these jumps, but by day 10, I was at least attempting them. And I was at least getting some, some air on the jump, but it's still a long way to go, but still it's going to be a phenomenal program. And so really inviting people, many of you who are active, you should have gotten promo codes. So the promo codes are great, and it's a great incentive to tell people. And what I've been, you, how I've been using them is 
when someone is interested and I know that they're interested, I've been saying, awesome, this is the price. And I show them the graphic that we have that, you know, we have graphics that share all the packages. And then I say, if you're really interested, I have a code and it's good till tomorrow. So I place urgency on it to see how serious they are in wanting to buy and wanting to purchase. And that either, that either gets them to purchase right away, or at least it tells me if they're like, hey, actually, I'm going to buy next week, which is fine, but I may not offer them that promo code. It depends on if I have it by next week. So I will say I have a promo code. It's good for an additional $10 off. I'd love to give this to you, especially customers or prior customers, and it lets them feel special. So we have the promo codes, $10 off. Make sure, make it a goal to maybe get rid of those 10, you know, to get to get rid of those three promo codes. And it has to be a challenge pack that's over 140, so it doesn't count on a completion pack that's 130. It has to be at least $140, the challenge pack. So just be mindful of that, that you don't tell someone, because that's already happened to some coaches, and that's fine. You just have to then tell them that you were mistaken, but that's fine. Um, and so we have that. So making sure that this week we're also starting our power hours, guys. So you'll notice that in the team page, we are, we post it every day. We're going to be hosting a live power hour. It could be 60 minutes. I believe there's going to be one that's 40 minutes. So again, these are going to be times that are going to be within our team Zoom room, which by the way, the team Zoom room is always open. So that's a room that you can always go into. You can do your workout. You can go in there and do your power hour. You may see other people on the team. It's a quiet space. Again, it's not meant to be chatting. It's a quiet space so people can come together like a community, like a communal. Um, and so this week, we're going to be starting the live power hours at different times. So again, it's meant, again, it's, it's, a, it's another opportunity for you to connect in with the team. Every single one of you, I don't care where you are in your downline. I don't care who your sponsor coach is. You are a part of this team, your team, Healthier You Project. I don't care where you are. You are part of the team. And so we're just doing more to make so that we can feel, you know, be more connected. Also, next Q&A will be on Thursday at 8 p.m., same time as last week. It doesn't mean that every week is going to be like that. But again, I'm just trying to create some consistency. But also, I'm going to be, we'll be switching it up. But that's going to be a 30-minute Q&A, again, where you can come in, ask questions, and ask anything about the business. It'll be, it'll be me again this week. Sometimes it'll be Luke, depending on the week. So wanted to let you guys know about that. Another announcement that I wanted you guys to know, make sure that you guys check out the new Shakeology.com website. It is amazing. They just did a whole new revamp where literally if you go into Shakeology and you go to Shakeology.com, it'll, re it'll reroute you to, I believe, the Team Beach Body site. But either way, but it has... It, it explains the ingredients like they really did a huge overhaul of the quality and the creativity behind putting that that site together so make sure that you guys check that out it's a great resource to send to customers who are interested in learning more about shakeology now we can feel confident sending them the website and saying hey check out the information all the ingredients are on here literally it's it, breaks down the ingredients, you know, why ashkawanda, what it does, you know, flaxseed, like it has all the ingredients on there and what they're good for in a really pretty, like very nice way, you know, nice way. So make sure that you guys check that out because that's also as a good resource for you, also for your own education to kind of go through it and just play around with it so you know how to navigate it so that you can send people to it who will need it as well. So... That's it. Those are my announcements right now. But I think Luke, I'm going to have Luke start and then I'll like pepper in, you know, as he's, as he goes and <laughs> I'll see what, I, what else I'm going to add. Um, but yeah, so take it away. <laughs> Hi, hello, hello team. How are we doing tonight? Um, did you mention about the event next week, the three day? Business? Oh, no, no, no. So next week, guys, we have the um, Beachbody is doing their super Saturday weekend and it's going to be, it's different than what they've done before. It's going to be in a business opportunity type event. So it's definitely a great resource for a you to get to, but also for you to send people to. So if you have people, you know, they're all over the country, they're going to be all over the country. So if you have friends, family members who you've been wanting them to get on board, maybe reaching out to them and say, Hey, do you have some time, look to see where their local, where their local event is and see if they may be available to go. It's usually two or three hours. It's a, it's going to be a really great event. 
So make sure that you tap into that resource to look into that because that's going to be a really good event. Okay. And so what I want to focus on for the training tonight is actually that. Um, if I can get a show of hands, how many of you are like kind of like scared with inviting? Let's be honest. Okay. I see a lot of this, but it's more of a this kind of situation, but that's okay. So this is actually what I want to talk about tonight, which is just inviting. And I think that a lot of people fear inviting. Um, and actually, let me ask this question. Is it because uh, some of you do not know what to say? Or is it because you feel like you're pushy? Or do you feel like you salesy maybe? Okay, salesy. Ooh, get it. There's something for you then. Okay, so um, I may want to like steer you guys in this uh, in this direction, but could it uh, could it also be that you are afraid to invite people, maybe because there is a lack of belief in yourself and what you are doing, maybe that like it's not working. Okay, so because. It may not be like the last question that I just asked may not be like what you say yes to, but sometimes there is a correlation to that. A lot of times, if there is something that you don't believe in or something that you're not very sure of, it becomes very hard for you to talk about it to another person. And if I can just help you with that, you may want to think about what you got going on in terms of the coaching and the fitness. Think of it as something that you are passionate about. And I don't mean in terms of passionate, like, oh, something that like, I enjoy talking about randomly like with friends from time to time. No, something that like, you are really passionate about. So like, for example, Stephanie right now is very passionate about like, meditation. So if you were to, uh, uh, and yoga. So if you were to ask her about, hey, tell me about meditation and yoga, she would just like, kill your ear off for like, the next five days. Because she can talk about every single aspect of yoga and meditation. So... When you talk about business and when you, I mean, when you talk about a beach body, if you say you are passionate about it, then you want to be able to talk about all the different aspects of what beach body is and what it has done for you and what it has to offer. Okay. That is the one thing that you want to do. So you, um, you want to, you want to really have a, a personal like relationship with everything that comes around it. And I forgot to mention that in the past, but I was going to say this right now. Um, if you, oh, if you've ever been part of this business saying that you wanted to help people and for some odd reason you're not talking to people, then we have an issue and we have to reconsider exactly why you're doing this or like what you're doing that. So every business that are created, that, that have been invented on this earth involve people not so much money. It involves people. Every successful business involves people. So at some point, you're going to be called or asked to talk to people. You are doing this because it's making you feel some type of way, hopefully a positive way, but eventually you want to share that with other people. So we're going to discuss the different ways to get over that fear to, um, to get people involved with you. So as I was saying, you want to be passionate about this because when you are passionate about what you do with Beachbody, it becomes very easy for you to talk to other people about what it is that you do, why it is fun, and why you're still doing it till this day. So like, it's not a fad that you've done for like a week or two months or so. But also, when it is something that is fun that you enjoy, it is easier for you to tell other people why they should do it too and more importantly, why they should do it with you, okay? Another thing that you want to avoid whenever you talk about inviting or talking about what you got to offer to other people is prejudging. A lot of you probably are doing this business with a lot of fear right from the get-go and nothing has happened. So you cannot just go into this business with this fear of like, um, those people don't want to hear it. You know, uh, those, uh, those people would not want to try this program or, you know, or I'm going to sound like I'm a salesy person. That is not your job to figure out what other people are thinking. That's going to make it very hard for you. What you want to think about is share from the heart what you're passionate about, what you love, and share that with them. The only thing that you can do is really present them with the goods 
and allow them to make that decision. That shouldn't be your job to make that decision for them, okay? So, also, I know that a lot of you may have this fear of rejection, and if this may help you, you wanna remove any personal attachment to that no or that rejection. That rejection has nothing to do with you. Remember what I just shared just right now? You are just sharing the goods with those people. It is up to them not to make that decision. So if it's not the right time or maybe the, not, not the right season for them, that's okay. Unless they flat out tell you, no, I don't want to do it with you, then it's a different conversation that we need to have. But for the most part, the no has to do with it's not the right time for me or I don't have the means or whatever the case may be, okay? But whatever rejection that you're getting, you want to get that personal attachment away from it because that has nothing to do with you. It's just not the right time for them. Now, for some of you that are newcomers, we used to have just the three vital behaviors, which was uh, be the proof, uh, I mean, be the product of the product, it was personal development, and it was um, invite, right? Oh, almost forgot like my three vital behavior here, okay? So one way that I want you to think about is, I mean, and now the fourth one is recognized, but I'm just gonna focus on the first three that I mentioned because to me, they are really, kind of like a formula, okay? So to me, your personal development and being the proof that the product works results in you being able to invite the people to join you and be part of that mission. So let's focus on personal development just a little bit. Personal development is just this aspect of this business that not only keeps you grounded, but it keeps you focused it gives you perspective and it allows you to really, it gives you the sense of belief of what is achievable and what you can do. It allows you to think of different ways for you to, to, to talk about the business or just do certain activities that will allow you to prosper and move forward and be the best version of yourself. That's what personal development does. One of my favorite personal development things to do is to, is to either read something or listen to a podcast or even talk to some of you coaches that gives me actions that I can do, something that I can just apply right away. Reading a personal development book for the sake of reading one doesn't do me any good. I like to do something that I can apply, something that can allow me to, to do something different or just be better, whether it is eating better food sleep more, work out better, or just be a better human being with you or with Stephanie or whatever the case may be, or just be more knowledgeable about something that I can share with you. So I like that kind of personal development that I can apply to myself, my personal life and my business life, or just when I interact with other people. And that's really what I want to do. So personal development gives me that foundation, you know, that allowed me to grow. Now, be proof that the product works. It's not just doing the workout and drinking your shake and eating all your food. Or at least if you're doing that, fantastic. But if you are doing that in your accountability groups, you're not doing enough because you're selling to the choir right now. We are already part of your tribe. So when you do that in your accountability group, that's not enough. Like we are not the ones that need to hear that. The people on the outside those are the ones that need to hear and like be able to see that, oh, she's doing or he's doing all of these things. So it's about you consistently sharing what you are doing for people on the outside to see that, oh, wow, she's doing all of this and look at the result and look at how she feels and look at how amazing and all the energy she got. I want to learn more about that. People that are watching you, those are the ones that need to know about that, not us so much. So the proof of the product works is not so much for your accountability group, it's for the people out there, okay? And this is very important for you to commit to that because this is a part that will help you to talk about what you're doing. So if you yourself, you're not committing to a program or being consistent with it or doing from beginning to end, then in a sense, you don't really have a whole lot to talk about. Can I just say something? Please, go ahead. One thing I will add about sticking to your, because I think being proof that the product works is key. Yes. And I think one thing to understand, guys, is that 
you have, when you're on your journey, your own personal journey, you're doing the workouts, you're staying on track with your nutrition. It's, it's a journey. It's a lifestyle change. And I'm saying this to you because I want you in that same token to have a lot of grace for yourself in that process. Because if you put yourself and you say, I'm going to follow this perfectly and I'm going to drink my Shakeology and I'm going to do this, you know, Monday through Sunday and I'm going to measure out all my containers, like that's not real life. I'm sorry. That's not real life. And you're putting yourself, you're giving yourself these expectations of what's not real and that's not what's going to serve your audience and it's not going to serve you. You understand what I mean? So it's really, really important that you just commit, commit to literally changing your lifestyle and be committed to recognizing that it's a lifestyle change. And I keep saying that because for example, if you want to, you know, you want to get healthy, you want to feel better, you want to have, you know, life giving foods, you want to be more plant-based, you want to have more energy, all these things that I know all of you want, because everyone wants that, you know, no one wants to be sick. No one wants to be lethargic. No one wants to have a foggy mind. No one wants to be depressed. No one wants to have to take medications. Everyone wants to be healthy. So one, but it's understanding that it's going to take time to a, create that habit of exercise. It's going to take even more time to really recreate the habits of healthy eating. And that's going to take time. And that's going to probably take years so I want you guys to set realistic expectations of what it really means to be proof that the product works, that this is literally a lifestyle change that you're going to be following, hopefully for the rest of your life. And it's going to be evolving. There's no way, for example, that you're going to be able to lose 30 pounds, you know, however many pounds you're trying to lose, eat in a certain way, and then ever get to that point and then go back to eating the same way and go back to eating the same snacks and go back to eating the same foods and the processed foods. You're going to gain all your weight back. So you need, so take the time now to create those solid habits. Give yourself the grace to create those solid habits. Don't just say, screw it. I didn't, you know, I didn't stick to this for the week and I should give up. Like that's not going to help you. You know what I mean? So like my biggest thing being here six years in this business literally has been working out super consistently every week for six years, you know, never leaving that. And then in terms of my nutrition, staying a student of my body and really being proof that the product works and looking at the nutrition plans and finding out what works for me, that's how you're going to be able to help your clients. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just keep that in mind when it comes to being proof that the product works, that being proof that the product works also means just freaking staying consistent and having grace for yourself so that you can help your clients and your future customers and the future people you're going to help do that as well. Because if you can't do that for yourself, you're not going to be able to do that for others. You're not even going to be there to be able to do it for others. Mm -hmm. So just be mindful of that in the journey, in the process. Yes. Something that we have shared in a lot of the training in the past is that people are not seeking perfection. No. You know, uh, there's been plenty of times when we share on our social media, like there are days where we just don't want to do it. And we have never seen anyone write us, hey, you didn't do your workout today. I guess I can't follow you anymore. That never happens. Everybody understand, hey, certain days, it's just not going to happen, man. It happens. You know, on certain days, you're doing so good, and then the ice cream truck shows up, and you're like, man, it happens to all of us. So people are, are, are actually looking for those moments versus you for like three months straight not falling off or like not like, not like indulging anything. This is not what they're looking for. They want to see the real you, okay? And so... As you just do your best to like stick to the plan beginning to end, that just now gives you something to, to like share consistently and talk about on your social media, both from your fitness and nutrition standpoint, but also from your personal development. You know, maybe it is a particular punchline that you heard or something that, that just got you thinking that you want to share with the world so that people are able to see consistently talk about this different aspect of what you do that are making you a better person. Okay. And by doing that, it just serves several purposes. Not only you are connecting with new people, you are starting a new relationship. You are also strengthening the ones that you already have and you are planting seeds. Now, something that I want to talk about in the planting seeds is that like, you're not planting seeds just for like your next business opportunity or just your next uh, workout bootcamp. You are really planting seeds about yourself, about you. You're planting seeds so that every single time that someone is ready to do a challenge, they are thinking about you 
and, and what you represent as a person and how you make them feel. That's what we are saying when we say planting seed, not just your next boot camp. It's like you want eyes to come to you at all times. This is really what you want. And by just being consistently with those actions and by just sharing what you're passionate about and what you do, because it's part of who you are, that just helps you not expand your network. Because I think another fear that some of you have is because you feel like, oh, I've talked to everybody, everybody that you already know, what we like to call your warm market. And then you're like, okay, I feel scared not talking to strangers and new people because I don't want them to think I'm weird or I'm like this, this, this person that they can't really like relate to. And you shouldn't really feel that way. Just be yourself, share what you love, share what makes you happy, and more eyes will come to you and you're going to be able to have this conversation and you won't have to think about it because you're just sharing what you love and who you truly are. I want you to okay? become like, I want you to become obsessed with bettering yourself, bettering mm -hmm. your mindset, growing your mindset, letting go of limiting beliefs, shedding shells, outer shells that you guys have, literally become obsessed with that. Like that's what, you know, that's what myself, Luke, you know, those who have had success in business, in this, in this business specifically, but just people who have had success in life, whether it's in a business or in their family or in, the, but like that, that life, that life goal of joy and peace and health and happiness, which is what everyone wants. And the only way you can do that is literally by becoming obsessed with self growth and, 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 and that, and that's where personal, that's what I love about this business. It's like, I was in medicine for so long. Never once did they tell me how many of you have a, in your company or your business and say, Hey, you should read a book about how you should improve your community, you know, improve this or improve that your communication or your leadership or, you know, to get let go of perfectionism. Like it's rare that people are asking you to actually work on yourself and to improve, you know? And so just really, and realizing guys that whatever you need to work on, I always look at whatever I need to work on, whatever my, my things, my challenges are, that's what I'm meant to be educating on and sharing about because that's my, that's my journey, you know? And, and you literally all, you don't have to be anyone else but yourself. You really don't. And I don't want you to be anyone else but you. I don't want you to be me. I don't want you to be anyone else on this team. I literally want you to be you and to share yourself and your struggles and your growth of those through those struggles authentically because there's literally a tribe out there specifically for you that's who have walked the path that you have walked, who's looking to say, hey, she's overcome what I've overcome. I need to listen to her. And so personal development, the books, that's where you're going to find the content and the, the information for you to be sharing, to be going live. Like that's what I do. You should, and the books change as you change your, 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 your content changes as you change, as you grow. I mean, I'm over here reading books on spirituality, on Buddhism, on all this stuff that I, that was not what I was reading six years ago. Six years ago, I was reading like, you know, gifts of imperfection, things about the ego, things about like, you know, just about nutrition things that I, at the time that i needed and as you grow there's always going to be room for expansion but you have to be committed and stay obsessed with that so that, and that's where you're going to get your content of what to share about and that's what's going to attract the right people to you you know you want to be authentically yourself i remember one time i think it was amy silverman she said she tried to be like everyone else and she got she was showing up to social media not like herself trying to be like someone else and then when she met people from her team she didn't vibe with them like, that's not what you guys want. You know what I mean? You don't want to be, you don't want people to come to you who are not your people and you're not going to be for everyone. And that's fine. You're not for everyone. And so I think it's just, if you can really just kind of, you know, just really get into that habit of just doing the personal development that fits you and then mm -hmm. sharing about that, you're going to see, you're going to have endless material that you're going to be able to share about. And people are going to look to you like a leader and they're, and you're going to be, you know, you're going to, you're going to feel confident. You're going to be enthusiastic and that's what's going to attract other leaders and other people to you and to your team and that's how you're going to build your business mm -hmm. no very true very well said so um i believe we can all agree that a lot of times uh we find things to be very difficult because there is a lack of preparation so for you i just have like five little tips that i think were very that that will be beneficial and helpful to you guys uh, that will make it inviting or be able to share about the opportunity whether it is the coaching or the fitness very simple and a smooth thing to talk about whenever you have conversation with people, okay? So the five tips are you want to create an action plan. 
Number two, you want to understand what your tribe is looking for to accomplish. From there, you want to build an invite that will get through to people. Number four, you want to utilize stories as a way to invite. And the fifth one, it is squashing objection for people to see their potential. Now, I'm going to explain the first two because the first two are the most important and you're going to see how the remaining three is just going to flow because it will be an application of those two. So create an action plan. We used to do this in the past when we have like the calendar for the upcoming month where we would like decide on this week, this is when we promote uh, X, Y, Z. Second week, we do this. Third week, we do that. Final week, we do that. So the whole team had an idea of what was going on and what was being promoted. Which, by the way, guys, I mean, as business owners, when we put out the calendars at the beginning of the month, like I'm telling you, hey, this is when the power hours are, the onus is on you as business owners to put it into your calendar. Yes. Okay? You know, start looking at yourselves as business owners. Start looking at yourselves as leaders. Take responsibility and, and put it into your calendar and whatever calendar system that is for you because you will forget. You will forget, you know, just and make it a priority, you know. So again, I just wanted to say that because mm -hmm. it's really important, you know, no one should, it, it's really important for you to take on that responsibility and start looking at yourselves as CEOs, as leaders, as business owners in your calendar, putting in when the key things are for the month and when the key things are for the week so that you, like what, like today, for example, I knew a week, you know, I knew a couple of days ago, this was going to, I was going to do this. I made sure that everything I had to do, that we had to do, I work around this call because this call is incredibly important to me. This team is a priority to me. And so you need to make your business and the, you know, uh, the same, you give, you give your, your business the same priority. Sorry. Yes. When you don't have a plan or a structure, you feel like you're just all over the place and you don't know what's going on and you get overwhelmed and then panic attack and next thing you know, you don't do anything. So we don't want that. So in our action plan, here are some questions for you to think about to maybe help you just get organized and figure out like what you want to do. So when does your fitness bootcamp start? Okay. Now, by asking this first question, if you know when it starts, that should give you an idea of when you promote for it. So if your plan starts, let's say, this upcoming Monday, I hope you don't invite tonight or tomorrow. You should have been inviting maybe like for the past week or the past two weeks right? Because you want to give yourself enough time to talk to people and get them signed up and get ready to go and have all the tools so that on Monday, everybody has the floor ready. So you want to know when it starts. Um, you also want to know like what you want your challenge to become. I know this is minute, but based on the name, you know exactly who you want to attract because there are different seasons to invite for different things, right? Very Im important aspect that not a lot of people think about how many people do you want in your challenge? Or how many people do you want to involve in a business? Because yes, we can go to Summit and we see a whole bunch of people with like those high numbers, but are you willing, capable, and ready to take on 40 to 50 people that come to you if they need your help? Are you organized enough to really lead 50 people beginning to end in that journey? So it's very important for you to decide how many people you want to help. Because some people just want to help five this month or maybe 10. So it is good for you to know how many people that you want to help, okay? Um, what will your focus be in that particular boot camp or challenge group? Is it just nutrition? Is it just community? Is it just the workout? Like, what will you be focusing on in that particular boot camp that you're running, okay? Um, will there be incentives? Will there be daily posts or will you be counting points? Are you running that group alone or are you doing that with another coach? Like these are little things that for you may not be that big, but it will save you a lot of time and keep you organized whenever you decide to do something. Um, is psychology or the performance line a mandatory thing to be part of your challenge group, right? What program will you do? This is a very big one because some people promote a particular program for a challenge group, but they're going to be doing something different. So these are small, like, like small little things that you may want to think about. Okay. Now, understanding that the second point is understanding what your tribe is looking for to accomplish. Now, for this one, you want to think about who you were before Beachbody. 
Because if you're going to be talking with enthusiasm about who you are, what you do, and what you love, you will probably speak from a personal experience. So if you remember who you were before Beachbody, it is probably those people that you would want to help because it's going to be close to you. And those are probably going to be the people that you're going to be talking to. So remember your story before Beachbody and what you wanted to accomplish. That will help you to figure out what your tribe is looking for. So could it be that you are someone that we're looking for simplicity? You know, like, okay, I had no clue what I wanted to do, but I know that I needed to lose weight. And somebody just gave me a system that had, here's your trainer, here's your meal plan, here's your community, go. So if you know that you are someone looking for simplicity, you're going to be talking from that point of view. So whenever you help out someone, you're going to be helping someone that is looking also for simplicity. Or maybe you happen to be someone that was looking to lose weight for spring break. You're going to be talking to that crowd. Or maybe in our case, we might be talking to someone that are just getting ready for wedding season. You know, sweat for the dress, whatever the case may be. You might want to be that person, right? Or if you are a mom, you are talking to people that just want to keep the weight up, like the baby weight up, right? Or maybe you happen to be someone who just want to feel good in her skin and like get her groove back, you know? So now you're talking to someone who's not really caring so much about the scale, but maybe just wants her clothes to fit right and just, just feel sexy and confident. That's all you're looking for. Or you might be someone who's talking to a person that tried to gain control over something. That's something that we don't really talk about, but maybe your group can be like, I just want to be able to not have to snack on sweets and savory stuff late at night. Maybe that's your challenge. But you see, or maybe you are talking to someone who just wants support or routine or someone who wants to be part of a culture. So now you see, as we go through these questions, you start now to have an idea of not only what you want to talk about, but who you want to talk to. So whenever you share, so now my next point, but like when you want to build and invite to get through the people, you know exactly what you are saying and how to really get the message across. Because you've already analyzed and figured out your criteria and what you want to say and who you're talking to. So now it becomes very easy for you to craft that invite or how you want to have this conversation to talk to people about what you do and what you want to accomplish. Now, when you want to share about your journey in your stories, you already have those criteria also because you know who you're talking to. You're talking to the person that has, that has no support or someone that is in lack of routine or someone that just tried to get that baby weight off, whatever the situation is. And so as you share those little nuggets in your stories little by little, it's going to be very hard for people to have objections. So it's very easy for you not to say, oh, well, I have doubt about this and about that. Well, you know how to squash that because you can speak from experience. So I hope that these tips have been able to help you because I think that with organization and preparation, you will find out that inviting and getting people to join your cause or be part of your team or join your fitness boot camp is not as hard as you think. And also think about like, just really be mindful and think about the, the pain, you know, your pain points of what you used to be like and what you used to worry about and what you used to be concerned about, you know, what you used to lay at bed, you know, lay in bed at night and think about yourself, you know, what you used to say to yourself. These are all ways to communicate to the people that, again, that you're going to be able to serve. You know, and so like when I, when I put a, you know, when I put an invite out or I make a post about coaching, you know, I, I may start something, you know, I usually start with like a line that's like, I know what it's like, and then you fill in the blank. I know what it's like to look in my closet and have no clothes that fit me. I know what it's like to step on the scale, look at the number and cry and literally not want to go out because I was there and I know what that's like. I know what it's like to you know, hide myself in the bathroom from my kids who are screaming and literally cry. You know, I know what it's like to be so hard on, so again, I know what it's like and you fill in the blank. Or, you know, or you say like, are you someone who, and you fill in the blank. Are you someone who, you know, 
used to look in your closet and like fill, you know, and see clothes that don't fit you? Or are you someone who, you know, was, was like overwhelmed with the amount of food choices and didn't know, didn't know exactly what, you know, what I could, what you needed to do to be healthy. You know, also the, the line of like, look, I, I speak very naturally in my post. You know, I, I like to keep my post very conversational, you know, as if I'm like literally speaking it. And that's a great, that's a great practice. I don't know if you guys, when you're writing, I say, I, I read my posts out loud so that I can hear it. So I can hear myself and I can make sure that it's conversational, make sure it's literally something I would say. Sometimes, you know, I get, you know, sometimes when I'm getting ideas, I take out my recorder, my voice recorder, and I will, or like my dictation, all of our phones have dictation. And I literally turn on the dictation and I just start speaking. And that may turn into a post, you know, and it's literally, and I don't, you know, and then I just kind of edit it. I make sure that it makes sense because, you know, with dictation, but so just, so I'll say something like, you know, look, I remember what it was like to fill in the blank, you know? And so again, you are going, you know, going back into those pain points of your, of your, of your person, of the person that you're meant to help. And that's, you know, look, I remember what it was like. And then you say, but then I made a decision or then I took action or then I'm so glad I found, you know, a system that worked for me. And then you go into the positive, you know, you go into the, into what, how things have changed and then you invite them to join you in that, in that same change in that journey. Yeah. If you invite, you know, um, if you invite people just because there is a new program coming in or because the team is doing a, a challenge group, you might feel forced to do something. But if you are, really being out there consistently and sharing with people what you're doing, who you are and what you love. And you build rapport with people and you find out about their shortcomings. It's going to be very natural and easy for you at the right time to say, Hey, we've been talking for some time and I see that you've been struggling with this, 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 this. I feel like my one solution will be able to solve all these issues the same way that it has done for me. How about you hop on and join me? And even that seemed very nonchalant, but that's an invite. And that, and like you would have built rapport and trust with that person that they would say, well, I've seen her do this. Look at where she is right now. I got nothing else to lose. Let me join and see what happens. We had a situation with one of our, with one of our prospects who's been talking to us about this trip she got coming up in August. And she never made the decision until maybe earlier this week we just said to her, hey, we totally understand you got a lot going on, but we just wanted to remind you that you've been talking to us about changing your ways and changing your body to get you ready for this trip coming up in August. August is fast approaching and you still haven't done anything. Mm -hmm. And at that point, she was like, yeah, you're right. Okay, let me join. Now, we didn't force her, but we just wanted to like, like put her in front of what she's been saying to us and what she wants to do. But yet she's not taking action. But we've been talking to her for quite some time, build report and trust. She was like, all right, okay, I'm in my own head. Let me just go ahead and let me just sign up and I just start doing this. So I hope this helps. That's all. That was it? Oh, that's it. <laughs> Wait, we need to talk for five more no, hours? No, no. <laughs> so another thing that I want you guys to think about is I want you to think about how you describe what it is that you do as coaches to other people. Um, I think, you know, I, I have a pretty much a pretty set thing that I explain to people, but I really want you to become comfortable with two or three, four lines that you know that you say all the time about what it is that you do as a coach. So for example, like for me, a common thing that I may say is like, and I wrote it down, sorry, I said, like I help and show busy women how to improve their confidence and elevate their life by focusing on their wellness. That's what I do. You know, that's what I do as a coach. And I have partnered with an amazing company who provides the tools and I provide the coaching, the mentorship, and the support. That's what, you know, so for you, coming up with a, a, little, a little two, three, four liner that you feel comfortable, confident saying, it's like, so say like, I help and show. So you may say, other moms, women, I help and show, you know, fill in the blank, you know, to improve their fill in the blank, you know, by focusing on their health and wellness. Okay, so it's a little, you know, fill in the blank so that you know, this is what I do as a coach. I've partnered with an amazing, biz, amazing company 
who provides the tools because that's what I, when I think about Beachbody, I literally think of it as tools in a toolbox. That's why when someone comes up to me and they're like, oh, I'm in the gym, I go to this. I'm like, great. What do you have for when you're, you know, you don't have the gym, you know, when you're traveling, you know, what else is in your toolbox, you know, so that when you are traveling, you don't get off track, you know, because the way I look at Beachbody is I partner with a company that provides tools. And so I'll part with, you know, that provides tools that I can do the coaching, offer the mentorship, offer the support. That is what we do as coaches at its very basic. And so it's like, cause remember, you don't have to come up with the workout programs. You don't have to come up with the nutrition guides. You guys literally just have to use the tools and then connect other people to those same tools. And then you just have to be a huge cheerleader for them and love on them and support them and be the example for them of what they should be following. And that's the simplicity of what we do as a, as a, as a coaches, you know, you don't need to go into, Oh, we make 25% this, this, and like, you know, you, it's this, you don't need to go into all that when you're explaining at first, you know, that's when you say, you know, would you be interested in more information, interested in more information, more information. And if they say yes, you can point them to one of the videos that we have that, sh that shares about coaching and you use the third party tools. That's what's key. Is so as you can see, that particular answer of our explanation of what she just came like it was flowing out of her mouth it was naturally because there was a sense of belief in the product and what she's doing because she has personal experience with it and know that it works so it's very easy to talk about something that is personal that works that has changed her life for the better mm -hmm. so when you come so like when you answer that 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 question from this personal standpoint and mindset it will also flow yeah and it will make you so much believable and people will be really in tune and want to know all right well tell me more or how do i get involved yeah. or how does that work you know it's it's realizing that it takes it does take time to build confidence yes. in the business and in yourself but the only way to do that is by literally by doing it by doing it by you know being the example for others like that's how you literally build your confidence you know i, I when i talk about psychology when i talk about Beachbody on the man, when I talk about our company, people are always like, wow, I never even liked this stuff, but you make me want to try it because you sound so confident about it. And you, and again, that just comes from that positioning and that, that confidence that I have and that enthusiasm. People want that the same way that you guys are, if your mom, whatever you guys, there's certain things in your life that you guys are really enthusiastic about and you guys will like go to bat and people, and you, and you know, people are like, whoa, like she is like, she knows what she's talking about. She's, you know, and so you have, you have to kind of, you know, build yourself in this business to have that person. same, to have that same enthusiasm and that same confidence, because that's, what's going to help you attract. People are attracted to that enthusiasm and to that confidence. And so, and it takes time. So, and again, I keep saying it takes time because I want you guys to have that commitment. Okay. I'm going to be here a year from now, two years from now, because it's literally enhancing my life. It's literally changing my, my, my mindset, my body, my friendship circle. Like it's, it's been one of the most positive things that has ever happened to me. And so I want, you know, that's where, and, and that, that only comes from literally being proof that the product works, you know, living the vital behaviors and sharing about that authentically. Mm -hmm. So anyway, with that said, you know, any questions right now about, the business, you know, just any questions in general that you guys want to ask right now, you know, we have like another 10 minutes. Um, if there's any questions or any comments or someone just said, I just shared a photo of me eating a whole pizza and someone reached out to me saying how they loved how real my posts were because I'm not perfect. <laughs> People are looking for a real person they can relate to. A perfect robot is not relatable. Exactly. Nina, what kind of pizza was it? <laughs> I hope it was a good pizza. <laughs> Where is she? It's like, oh, <laughs> there she is. No, don't give it a thumbs up. What kind of pizza was it? I need to know these things. You can't hide this from me. <laughs> it was a margarita pizza, so it had like mozzarella cheese on there, tomatoes, basil. It was really good. <laughs> Yum. I love pizza. We, we got to hang out. We got to eat pizza together. My goodness. Yes. <laughs> Gosh, love it. But no, but this is good. Like, this is good. Like, these are the kind of things that like, um, that, like people love, like, especially if you're strict and then one day you're out and you want to eat a whole pie or like we love desserts like she likes to share on her social media how much she loves ice creams and sprinkles that makes her relatable because there are a lot of ice cream lovers out there that are like can't have ice cream because i gotta work out this girl does not deprive herself at all 
or just food. I always tell no people shame I, can, in her I game. can out-eat a lot of people. You guys, I can I have a large appetite. Yep. A very large appetite. So I you would see say her post when we if I can get in eating. shape and I can get healthy and eat the amount of usually people are like, wow, yes. you eat a lot. And I'm always like, yeah, I eat a lot. I love food. <laughs> so it's like, so again, it's just being, you know, being we authentic. We are passionate about food. We love food. So you passionate can be about passionate food. about food yes, and love totally. food and still, you know, have success in your body. And everything's about balance. Totally, you know, everything's totally. about balance. But any questions, any concerns, anything right now? No? Oh, well, I'll say this. Since we have uh, the business opportunity happening next weekend, and I will challenge all of you to invite some people to it. Mm -hmm. Start practicing your, sharing your stories and what you do and start inviting people to the opportunity. I'm not going to go too crazy. Let's see if we can get like three to five people. <laughs> Let's see. You know, I could go crazy and say 20, but no, but just get into the habit. And I, and I think the more you do it, the easier it becomes, and the next thing you know, you're like, oh my goodness, I was struggling with just one people. Now I can just have like 20 people whenever I want to. It's just a question of habit and just being prepared. Once that happens, it will click, and then you will be unstoppable. And you can invite while eating pizza too. Yes, you can do it. <laughs> just throw it out there. Awesome. Awesome, guys. Well, next week, next... Sunday, we will have our call at 7, and then again, we're having Q&A on Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll be on here, so if you guys have any questions or anything, you guys can come on, come on and learn, come on in. It's like open hours. And then we'll be doing the, I think Luke's up tomorrow for the power hour at, at noon for anyone who's home during the day and wants to get some work in from noon to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And they'll be very set. Again, they're, they're not meant to be chatty. It's just literally meant to time to come in and get your work done. Just and focused hour. Just, focused hour. Just time just to do work. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you. And have a great, great night. Bye.